The Pima Animal Care Center is the only open admission shelter in Tucson. Every year it takes in roughly 20,000 animals, mostly dogs and cats. The goal is to spay or neuter and microchip and then adopt out as many of these animals as possible. It's referred to as a live release rate. Last fiscal year we made it to 90. Um, when I first started here a few years ago, it was in, I think, the low 70s. Right. Ten years ago, the live release rate was around 40 percent. Getting it to 90 was hard work. It means a lot more of these animals are finding homes and leaving the shelter alive. Innovations and new ideas helped, including expanding the foster program. Foster programs are amazing, especially for little guys like him and younger. Um, the shelter's really not a place to grow up. I've been a foster for Pima Animal Care Center for many, many years. I know that there's such a desperate need. And on social media, I often see desperate pleas going out. Seven bottle-fed babies, you know, eyes not open yet, must leave the shelter. Rebecca Hamilton is a registered nurse at Catalina Springs Memory Care. Here they provide round-the-clock care for residents with Alzheimer's, dementia, and other forms of memory loss. We are always looking for new activities for them that can bring meaning and depth and joy into their lives. Hamilton had an idea that the residents and caregivers at the center could act as a collective foster family. They said, fine, when we find the next perfect litter, you'll get a call. Of course, I was like, yeah, we'll do it right now if you want to do it. That was on a Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, I got the call. We have the perfect two kittens for you. And so it began. Two tiny kittens that needed to be bottle fed every few hours joined residents at the center. One is Turtle, that's the official name. And then the other one is named Peaches. Peaches was a little tiny baby wrapped up in a towel. Do you remember that? No, 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 you bite no. me. No, you bite me. But do you remember holding her and giving her the bottle? Uh -huh. Remember I would always come yeah. on? Yeah. And I'd say, who wants to feed kittens? I and, did. Yes, <laughs> you did. And you were very good at it. As that muscle memory is re-engaged, holding a baby, giving a baby a bottle, memory channels are completed and reawakened again. And that's what's so lovely about the story of Thelma suddenly recalling, you know, all the cats that she had raised in on the farm where she grew up. We had 19. 19? Well, you was just like a baby. I used to put mine in there. A baby oh, yeah, carriage, yeah. take it around and put a dress on it. Those memories are very precious to us because those memories are some of the first things that our residents lose. This is Jean-Claude Colonnet. Oui. Oui, and he is from France. And this is Greg Moore. And Greg, I think, actually is more bonded with these cats than almost anyone here. I had a cat when I was a kid, and, uh, and then we had a, a dogs after that. And so, but there's always been a, a, an animal around someplace around the house. Your cat is not as good as mine. I know. There's so much to say about these kittens that I find with some of our residents, words come more easily. I can let them out of their the cage, and they're usually pretty lazy, pretty lazy. But, uh, but they'll brighten up and get going real fast. Yes, this is a dear gentleman, but he really does have significant cognitive deficits. This whole experience and subject is important to him, and he's really done his absolute best to express that. My guess is that they're about two and a half pounds uh, per two. Now the turtle and peaches are over two pounds, they will soon be spayed and adopted out to their forever homes. Residents here will have to say goodbye. 
this was always a nice, happy place, but it is very joyful with their presence. <laughs> she loves you. Sometimes we give comfort and receive comfort at the same time. And that's certainly been the case here. Okay, come on. It may be difficult to say goodbye to these two. How could it not be? But the program will continue. This was the first like little pilot litter. So after these guys come back, they actually want to try with two different litters next time because they have two separate wings. So each wing of the memory care facility can have their own litter to take care of. I think that it won't, wouldn't be too surprising to find this uh, getting a replacement for her. This program's actually got a, a ton of attention. Not only just like here in Southern Arizona, but like Phoenix in Canada, as far away as like the UK. Yeah, that's a good kitty. My ulterior motive in all of this is that this serve as an example. It is an ideal combination, a perfect use of resources for the good of both. And um, I hope that other assisted living homes take our example and take it further. So should we get some more? Two more? Mm. Tw 20 more. 20 more? Oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> we'll have you bottle feeding all day. Oh, yeah. OK. Mm -hmm.